Hi, I'm Dan Seberg. I'm the Chief Programs Officer here at the Rescue Mission. We're standing in our downtown campus. Um, this is where we provide all of our services for homeless individuals in Syracuse and Onondaga County. Downtown Syracuse, standing in front of our newly renovated shelter and day center. Uh, we opened in October and it's got 183 beds. Um, we went from a much smaller cramped uh, shelter space. Um, we, we wrote for some state funding and we're able to renovate this into, you know, uh, what one person described as the Taj Mahal of homeless shelters. So um, we, we really strive to create a place of dignity and respect for individuals that are experiencing homelessness. Also with the renovations of this facility, we include an entire health wing where people can get basic health care screenings. And it's a place where we can address somebody's immediate uh, medical health needs and, and even their mental health needs and then refer them out for the right services. Um, we also have an employment resource center and when you come to the rescue mission um, we partner you with a case manager that will help you um, work out an independent life plan and move as quickly through a shelter system as possible uh, so we can get people housed and in their permanent home. So currently I'm standing in one of eight dorms that we have in our shelter facility. You can see, you know, when you come to the shelter, you have your own space, you have your own locked closet. Um, and again, that's just to give people a little bit of sense of ownership and a little bit more dignity um, as they're experiencing homelessness. This dorm specifically is designated for 18 to 24 year olds. So um, if you're between the ages of 18 and 24, we'll try and get you a, a bed and a space in this dorm because it, it gets you with people that are um, in a similar place in their life, so to speak. Um, additionally, you know, each year, it's, it's somewhat surprising, but we serve um, roughly 300 18 to 24 year olds that come through the shelter in any given year. So that's 300 young people that um, could potentially be experiencing their first bout of homelessness, um, whether they've uh, just had a tough time or they've aged out of the foster care system. Um, they end up here at the rescue mission and again, we try to help them navigate the next steps of their um, path towards independence here at the Rescue Mission. Um, here we're standing at the Food Service Center at the Rescue Mission. Um, we're the only facility that serves three meals a day, 365 days a year in Syracuse. Um, we just got done in the lunch hour, which was, we served 229 meals. And on average, we serve about 700 to 750 meals every day. In the last five years, we've served about a million meals here at the Rescue Mission. Um, and again, it, it's, it's day in, day out. We're prepping meals, we're providing meals for men, women, and children. Anyone that comes to the Rescue Mission can get a meal here. Um, and, you know, we see uh, higher influx of meals during uh, summer months because a lot of kids aren't able to get meals at school anymore. So we see more families and more kids come through the summer. Um, we have a staff of about 12 to 15 individuals cooking all the time, prepping meals. And we also get lots of donations and donated foods from uh, our local partners, GNC Foods and Wegmans, um, that, that send us roughly um, well, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of food every year that we then turn into meals for people that don't have enough income or don't have enough resources to provide for themselves. During breakfast, lunch, and dinner, it's, it's really standing room only. This is the only time it's empty like this, just after we've uh, finished the meals and cleaned the facility. Um, we're really at our max capacity, and so we have to stagger people coming in to eat and um, try to get everybody through as quickly as we can in about an hour. Um, you know, at Thanksgiving and Christmas, that's when we see our largest days of the year. And uh, both Thanksgiving and Christmas in 2015, we served two, over 2,000 meals. So you can see this space isn't going to hold 2,000 individuals, uh, but our staff works really hard to um, get everybody in, get everybody a meal, let them, you know, get their, uh, get their sustenance for the day, whether it's for breakfast or it might be the last meal that a lot of people have uh, at the end of the long day. And so we just want people to have a good experience here, not, not have to feel rushed all the time, um, but that, that's a capacity issue that we have in this current space is just not enough seating. 
Um, we hope to expand in the not too distant future uh, to where we can have a larger um, dining area and then additionally a dining area that's reserved for families. Um, so moms and kids can come in and have more of like a family style dinner and not just kind of have to look, look for the first available seat that's open. Okay, so now we're standing in the Thrifty Shopper on our Syracuse campus. And throughout uh, Syracuse, Onondaga County, and surrounding counties, we have Thrifty Shopper stores all over. And that's a way we generate income to operate the programs that we have. So when you donate your used clothes and we then sell them at our thrift store, um, it provides income to, to uh, operate the shelter and create all the meals that we serve each day. This uh, Thrifty Shopper is a little unique in that it's really here for our clients and for the surrounding communities. So we're kind of centered right in between the near west side and the south side. And um, a lot of people just don't have a lot of income to stretch each month. So uh, people will come here and they can get as uh, they can get clothes here for free. So um, we kind of put you on an internal credit system, um, and then you can come each week and get a certain amount of clothing items for however many kids you have in your family. You know. Um, your spouse, your, your boyfriend, girlfriend, whoever. So um, it's for our shelter clients, for homeless people that really don't have much uh, clothing. Um, and it's also for the community as well. So many people will come, have a meal, whether it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner, then come over to the outreach store, get some clothes. And that helps, again, people to stretch their dollars each month um, so they can get by. Um, but again, here everything is free for our, our clients and for the people in the community. Um, so now we're standing in Gifford Place Apartments, um, and here, this is in our main building on the Syracuse campus. And what we created was single room apartments for individuals that have experienced homelessness. And it was kind of a way to stair step somebody back to independence. So we keep the rent very low here. Um, we provide with supportive services. Um, guys can get their laundry done here. There's a kitchen space that everybody can share. But you have your own apartment. So uh, you, you're gaining your independence back while you're still uh, residing in a community setting. Um, so if you're a resident here at the Rescue Mission, we want to give you opportunities that you might not have if you were um, just kind of living in an apartment off of our campus. So, you know, for example, this summer, generous donors have given us tickets and we were able to take uh, a bunch of clients and residents to um, the, the Journey concert that just happened here in Syracuse, um, the Def Leppard concert. Actually, uh, a group just left this morning to go down to a Yankee game today. So we left at 6.30. Uh, some staff went with about uh, 15 individuals. They drove down to New York. They're going to watch the game. They'll be back by 9.30 tonight. So we want to build um, experiences into people's lives as they're living here. Also, these vans are also our, our HIS team, so our Homeless Intervention Services team. And these vans um, go out every day of the week, seven days a week, whether it's um, negative 20 or whether it's 100 degrees like it is today. Um, and we're always looking for people that are in need, people that have yet to come into a shelter, um, but are living on the street, living rough, and we try to build trust with them, build relationships and connections so that we can help them off the street as quickly as possible. Whether it's into our shelter, uh, another shelter in town, or possibly right into an apartment. But we have to look at each individual case and see what those people need to get them off the street as quickly as possible. So if you see vans like this out and about, it could be one of our his team drivers uh, just making connections trying to get people off the street. So here I'm standing in front of another building here on our campus. Um, this building houses two specific programs. One, it's our chapel. And so here at the Rescue Mission, we hire chaplains. We have them on staff to help address anybody's spiritual needs, um, to help people connect with their, um, their, their places of faith and worship if they'd like to connect. Um, but all of that is open for people. If they're, if they're trying to find someone to speak to about you know just what's going on spiritually, that's what our chaplains are here for. And then over here we've got the entrance to our Crossroads Adult Home. Um, and so this is an adult care facility. Uh, 59 individuals live here. And this is permanent housing. Here we're standing on the westernmost part of our campus. 
and you'll see these two houses right here on Granger Street. Um, both of these houses were uh, acquired by the land bank. They had been vacant and um, it's pretty dilapidated. This one we just purchased and we're going to have it demoed very soon because it's it, we couldn't salvage it. This this house um, we were able to partner with um, some locals, local uh, construction companies and developers in the community and we renovated this house and turned it into a three bedroom uh, shared living unit for three people that were formerly homeless. So we now have three men that live here. Um, they, they've been homeless, they went through the shelter system and now they're living independently in their own place. We took it down to the studs and built it all the way from the ground up. So if you are interested in getting involved in one way or another, whether it's donating or volunteering or, or just getting involved in figuring out how you could uh, help us at the rescue mission, um, you can go to our website at rescuemissionalliance.org uh, to connect and find ways that you can get involved. Thanks. Thank you.